All right, Mount Gilead, thank you for joining us today. Uh, you are at our kitchen table with us, and I'm not a big fan of the quarantine, but one thing that I can say is that we've had a lot more family meals here together. Uh, so I have like that. We've spent a lot of time eating on our back porch and eating at this table together. So uh, even though things are kind of uh, slower right now, uh, we are grateful to be able to spend time around this table. All right. So I know most of you know uh, uh, my family, but just in case you don't uh, know my girls, I'll get them to introduce themselves. And I'm going to start right here. Hi, I'm Blakely. What do you like to do, Blake? Uh, we do online dance classes now, and we do Zoom bands and all that stuff. All right. And those are her quarantine. Those are her new quarantine yeah. habits. So, hobbies, I should say. Uh, hobbies. So, uh, Blakely's a dancer. Uh, her nickname is Bacon. All right. Go That's not. Um, I'm Kinsey. <laughs> what do you like to do? Uh, well, I, I like to walk in the mailbox. Out with new she has had her mother. I like, to, I like to walk through the mailbox and come back. Yeah. <laughs> McKenzie I'm likes frozen. to take trips to the mailbox. I'm like frozen smiling. Uh, McKenzie has several nicknames. Uh, probably her Kitty. most popular Kitty. is Kenny Wheel. All right. I'm like frozen smiling. Um, I'm Hadley, and I like to do dance as well. And I like playing with my dogs. And dogs. <laughs> I like dogs. spending time with my family. Oh. What's your favorite quarantine activity? Sleeping in. Sleeping in. <laughs> yeah, that's All a right. good one. And everybody knows Allison. What's your favorite quarantine activity? Um, my favorite quarantine activity is definitely um, hanging out with the girls at night. Um, for the first time in a long time, we have watched every movie on Disney+. Plus. That's right. Uh, we have rented a couple of pricey uh, movies, but just being able to sit together as a family, yeah. play cards, whatever it is we're doing. So. Yeah, we've become Uno professionals and uh, all of that. So, uh, our devotion tonight comes from uh, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, I don't know if you have a Bible handy, but if you do, grab one or or uh, use your. Uh, well, you can't use your phone because then you couldn't see us, but. Uh, just grab a Bible, Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 49, and uh, I'll read this to us, and uh, we're going to talk about one of the most interesting and uh, significant things that happened when Jesus died, uh, uh, and we'll get to that here in just a second, all right? So let me read chapter 23, verses 44 through 49. It was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now, when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breast. And all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. All right. So let me let's summarize this for you real quick, and then I'll ask you girls some questions. Okay. Uh, as Jesus was dying, the whole land became dark. Uh, then at the moment of Jesus' death, the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. Matthew 27, 51 tells us that. So the temple curtain divided the holy place from the most holy place where God's presence lived. So the curtain blocked people from freely entering into the most holy place to spend time with God. But after Jesus died and the curtain was torn, the way to the most holy place was open. And that symbolized that we can all go into God's presence if we believe and put our trust in Jesus' work on the cross. The death of Jesus is the heart of the gospel. So the writer of Hebrews said that if Jesus hadn't shed his blood for us, there would be no forgiveness of sins. All right? So, all right, girls, what ha happened to the temple curtain when Jesus died? It was torn, it was, it was torn in two. Torn in two from what, which direction? Do you remember <laughs> Top that? Bottom. From top to bottom. What is significant about that? Why, why was it torn from top to bottom and not bottom to top? Separate us from the holy place. 
That's what the curtain did, separated us from the holy place. But when it was torn, it was torn from the top to the bottom. Okay? So if a person tore the curtain, where would they probably start? Because this curtain's really high. they could reach. The <laughs> they would start at the bottom. Okay? So the Bible tells us specifically that the curtain was torn from top to bottom, meaning who tore the curtain? God, God did. Okay? So that's God trying to communicate or tell us something. Okay? So, uh, why was there a curtain dividing the inner courts of the temple? Likely. To, to separate it from the holy place. Yeah, say it again. Say it, say it for the people in the back. To separate it from the holy place. Right? They had a curtain there because why could why could not why couldn't people I'm going to ask a question. Uh, so why could not. Uh, uh, why couldn't people enter the most holy place? Because they all said because we're sinful and God is Holy. not. Okay, so uh, we're not allowed in there. Okay, uh, and that's the way everybody in the Old Testament lived. God was separate from them, and they the only way they could have a relationship with God was through a priest. Okay, and he can only go in that room one day a year. With okay? jingle bells. With, yes, they would tie a rope around him. And he had little bells on his uniform so that when he went in there, they would listen and make sure he was still moving. Bells quit ringing. And then that meant he died, they would pull him out. So, because no sin could be present in God's presence. Okay? So, uh, the curtain protected the priest from the presence of God, and only once a year could the high priest enter the most holy place where God's presence lived. The rest of the year, the way was shut, and the people of Israel could not go into God's presence. Right? That's a pretty sad way to live, isn't it? We get to pray all the time. We can pray all day, anytime we want. We can talk to God. Okay? So, the next question. Why did God tear the temple curtain in two when Jesus died? To show we have access to God. Mm -hmm. All right? So, what does Jesus change? We did not have access to God. But through Jesus' death on the cross, now we what? Now we can come into God's presence. All right? The book of Hebrews tells us to approach the throne of grace with confidence. All right? Because Jesus has made a way for us to have a relationship with God. All right? Okay. Sound good? All right. So I'll say a word of prayer. What do you guys want to pray about today? That COVID-19 will stop. Very, very soon. That the virus would stop soon. That we would all be protected and to forget about coronavirus. And to that we would be protected from the virus, right? Or sick people to be healed. Sick people, we we uh, it's kind of spreading some in Alabama, and I, I mentioned earlier on Facebook. I know uh, people personally now that have it, uh, so we want to be praying for them. Uh, healthcare workers. Healthcare workers. All right. What else? What about our patients as we wait? That's the thing that I thought about a lot today was, you know, it's hard to be patient because we want this to be over. All right. But we got to trust that God knows what he's doing. Okay. All right. Let's also pray and thank, thank God that we have access to him through Jesus. That's the big one. Okay. Who wants to pray for us? You want me to do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, we're bashful. So join us as we pray. Father, we are grateful to know you and uh, thankful that we have, that Jesus has made the way for us to have access to you. And we can know you and we can have a relationship with you and we can pray to you. And you can speak to us, and we can speak to you, so we thank you for that. And we do pray for uh, people in our hospitals that are working now that are coming in contact with this virus. Uh, a lot of them go to our church, and we pray for protection over them, uh, that you would have mercy there and, and give them physical protection. And, Lord, for people uh, that have this virus, uh, uh, here in our hospitals and in our nation around the world, Lord, I pray that you would bring healing to their bodies, that you would uh, restore their health. And God, I pray that you would receive so much 
praise and glory because you are a God that heals. And I pray that you would have mercy uh, on us and, and protect our families, protect our church families from this virus. And uh, Lord, give us patience as we wait uh, uh, now for this thing to be over and uh, give us wisdom as we wait. Uh, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything you want to tell the world before we go? Be safe. Wash Be your safe. hands. Wash your hands. Okay. Uh, we love you guys. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful night. And uh, we pray that God blesses you uh, today. Thank <laughs> you.